Welcome to the series nobody can get enough of, and let its unqualified reviews, and today is a special episode for two reasons. One, we're reviewing probably my favorite radio that I have right now, and second, we are joined by a special guest. Hey guys, it's Hunter's Technical Fun. How's it going? Yes, Hunter's Technical Fuck has joined us today, because he is a fellow Z-Crane CC Pocket owner, which is the radio we're reviewing today. No, that is not a San Gian... right in my hand. I could make a suggestive joke, but I'm not going to. Um, and Hunter's actually the one who encouraged me to get a Seacrane CC Pocket, and I didn't believe him on how good this thing was until I actually was able to use one. I was like, holy crap, this thing's really good. So, yeah, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, especially for a small pocket radio. It's, well, we'll get into that, so... The radio dates back to at least the mid-2010s, as that's when the manual has its copyright date. And, um, it could easily date back further. I know C-Crane's been making radios for a long time, with things like the original CC Radio, CC Radio Plus, and the C-Crane Skywave SSB. Which, honestly, I would get a Skywave SSB if it weren't for the fact it's $150. That's but it, a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, but... Then again, that's what the Grace Digital Spark SHD T750 over there cost when it was new. I don't know how much my grandfather got it for, because not only it was a factory refurb, but also it was a Christmas gift. I'm turning the fan on uh, here. Also, that's how much you can really expect to pay for a 519 or a 996 nowadays, because stupid eBay idiots, like, jacking up the prices. But the design of the radio is good. It has... It has a decent heft to it. It's not heavy by any means, but it feels substantial. And the plastic it's built from is good, good thick plastic. And it's, well, it's, it's a well-designed thing. And comparing it in size here to everybody's favorite, a three and a half inch floppy disk, because that's what I had available. Nice. You can see here, uh, of course, Hunter can't because uh, my camera's just facing down at the bed. And plus, we did this is a voice duo call. We would use Discord, but it was being kind of glitchy on the Brownout Touch. Plus, I might add, if it were the original Touch, we'd be even more screwed. Um, but comparing it here to the 3.5-inch floppy disk, you can see it's far more narrow, a little bit taller, and it's about the thickness of seven 3.5-inch floppy disks. And if you must know, for the pedantic, yes, this is a 720K diskette. But, anyways... Great. Taking a look at the radio here, mine is actually missing the rubber coating. Um, is it, I've used this thing basically daily over the past more than a, a little, just a little bit more than a year that I've owned this thing. Um, but it originally had a rubber coating going down the right side, the bottom, and up the left side, uh, kind of bordering up here these uh, angles which lead to the top. Um, Hunter, does yours still have its coating? Does yours still have its coating? Yeah, and it's like it's not one of those cheapo rubberized feeling coatings that just turned to mush, like you'd see on like some early two thousands MP three players and stuff. No, this is like an actual rubber around the outside um, of the radio. On the left side, you have your audio output selector, uh, which toggles between your internal speaker, mono headphones, and stereo headphones. We'll get to that. Bottom has diddly squat. The right side here has a, shit, I turned it on, uh, lock, unlock switch, alert mode, um, button, and your band selector. Top of the radio has your, what did I do? Why'd you beep at me? I didn't do anything. Uh, the top of the radio here is your power slash reset button, your analog volume wheel, headphone slash antenna socket. The back of the radio has the battery compartment and the screws for the belt clip. Now, Hunter, do, does your still have the belt clip on it? Yes, I have not taken my belt clip off. I thought about it, but I'm like, you know what, I might as well just leave it on. So, that's what I did. <laughs> yeah, mine doesn't have the belt clip, because I was actually given a case that fit the CC Pocket, the DT400W, and uh, similar radios. And, um... I actually decided to remove the belt clip because it was causing the back of the case to stretch, and I didn't want to 
caused premature damage to the case. Um, it was just it's just held in by two screws uh, here and here. Uh, then I think the case got kind of messed up in the washing machine because a cat decided to relieve itself on it. Um, but anyways, and the battery compartment here, uh, you you have to have a decently thin fingernail to open it up, or you can just use a like a flat blade screwdriver. Just simple. Yeah, and if you open it up here, you can see it. Just two double A's. Uh, these are actually rechargeables, and I can't find the charge for it. It holds them in good and tight, neglecting the need for foam on the battery cover. And on the battery cover, you also have a sticker which denotes the model number and serial number of the radio, as well as some other things. Let's talk about the antenna. Yeah, I, uh, oh, I use rechargeable batteries for my unit. Do you also use rechargeable batteries in your CL100 or no? Yes, I do. I see. Yeah, I can't find my Amazon Basics recharger, and I'm, I just need to save up and get some energizers, because the energizer recharger is way better, and plus, I mean, it's a more reputable brand instead of Amazon Basics, who are literally just, like, slapping their sticker over Panasonic batteries, as most people have found, but other times, it's a like cheap... Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> They're like that V. Westlife video where he was looking at eBay, and it's like, Pemasanig, capital G at the end. <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, if you think about it, it's all just made in the same factory, but it just reminds you of that uh, scam batteries on eBay video, and somebody posted in the comment section, it was like, this scene um, of, um, like, a season 7 era Simpsons episode, where Homer's looking at new TVs, and like, oh, look, Pamaphonics, Magnet Box, and Sore Me, <laughs> and Sore Me. Nice. Good quality brands. Quality. Nice. Of course, they wouldn't have heard that the way I, the way you heard that there because the mic isn't feeding into the phone as well. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm using an Audio Technica microphone here, kind of like what you'd use to mic an instrument or do vocals in. Um, because the balloon. Taking off the windscreen. <laughs> oh, you said it. There you go. <laughs> Are your ears sufficiently bleeding now? <laughs> I had no idea what he just said because I can't hear him. <laughs> okay, I've I've uh, put I've put the screw on windscreen back on, but I'm using this because Humanware, in their infinite wisdom, put the microphone like like two millimeters away from the right speaker on the Brown Note Touch Plus. Quality. I know, right? Thank you. Um, but anyways, let's talk about the antenna situation on this Ukraine CC Pocket. It doesn't have one! It has an internal AM antenna, which is pretty good for most cases, but this is actually why they give you the output selector switch on the left side. It's because your antenna is whatever you plug into the headphone socket. Kind of like what you'd see if, uh, like an MP3 player or your smartphone has an FM radio and you have to plug in earbuds to use as the antenna. Except here... You can have you can use something else as your antenna, but still have sound going through the internal speaker. And the radio actually. But I will say. Uh, the continue nice on. thing about uh, the CC pocket is the fact that if you have a strong enough radio station, like the weather station, I think it's WXM42 here in my area. Yeah. Um, I don't have to have an antenna if I don't want to, but it definitely does help. I'll say that. Yeah. Uh, like on mine, for example, uh, I pull in WXG84 fairly well. Only problem is it introduces some interference uh, where it flashes the display every four seconds when it's in alert mode. And uh, so that introduces some interference. I'll give you a... Oh, shit. It was in lock mode. A sample here. That's in the alert mode. Uh, but if I take it out of alert mode... And of course, you can just play an antenna, but um, it works okay for weather band. AM is good without an external antenna. FM is good enough for strong local stations, but you'd need an antenna plugged in for anything else. And the radio actually came with a wire antenna with a right angle plug on it. Um, unfortunately, mine is missing that. 
as you should expect by now. And, um... Yeah. <laughs> the radio also came with instructions and a pair of C-Crane CC Buds, which... They're better than most of the included earbuds you get because they actually had the uh, silicon tips on them, but that's about all you can really say for them. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the earbuds that come with the CC Pocket, they're okay, but if you really want good quality earbuds, I'd go out and invest in, like, some Sony's or Sennheiser's. Well, I don't really know if Sony has... What comes in the box? Yeah. Well, what comes in the box is basically never good enough for most things. If you want good earbuds... Or really good headphones, generally. Uh, Sony, Sennheiser, AKG, Klipsch. Coming in like that. Yeah, Kl- Klipsch is... I don't have Klipsch headphones. I got Klipsch speakers up at school, but they're up at school. And my dad loves Klipsch. He's the one that got me into Klipsch. And, well, yeah. Sorry, continues there. But um, for the antenna in this demonstration, I'm actually using... An AM loop antenna with an 8th inch connector that came with my Spark SHD T750. Uh, and even though it's intended for AM, this actually works with the pocket on all bands. Um, so you're, And you can use a standard AM loop antenna with terminal connections. Because hypothetically, you could adapt the terminal connection, like split lead, um, over to an, a coaxial F-type connector. And then adapt that to phono. Uh, or uh, you can either adapt that to phono and then adapt that to 8th inch, or you could just adapt it straight to 8th inch. Um, um, but I mean, think of it this way. If the radio included a pull-out telescopic antenna like the HH50 does, it could break easier. Yeah, I, I've done that once. One of my old series. Yeah, and then... You have to replace it, which that's one thing most radios can say is you can at least replace their antennas. The HH50, I think you're fucked as far as that goes with replacing the little stumpy antenna. But the HH50 um, is not the best of radios. Um, but anyways, moving on from that. What? Wait, what are you trying to get to come up? Yeah, because he's in um, the eastern part of the state, uh, Berkeley County area. So he's monitoring WXM42 in Hagerstown, Maryland, operated by NWS Sterling. I'm monitoring WXJD4 in Charleston, and thanks to the lovely 260, I can also monitor... Uh, WXM70 in Garfield, and uh, it doesn't need to get the best option because it's just a 1050 hertz radio, but I like the CC Pocket, but anyways, so let's talk about the reception quality on this, as well as speaker quality and tuning quirks. I'm going to plug in the antenna here. On weather band, it's actually fairly good. Um, this thing, for example, I'm used to pull in things as far away from the home as stations over into uh, parts of East Central Kentucky, as well as um, KIH-42, I want to say it is, uh, High Hill, Ohio, operated by National Weather Service Pittsburgh, like I pulled it on the 260, um, but that's in another video. Uh, but that was under high and, pressure uh, conditions. I'm add one thing in too. Yes, sir? Uh, whenever you want to take a radio, the CC Pocket is very good for Yes, it is, because it pulls in all the bands pretty well, and it's like has a deck of cards. So it easily fits into your pocket, uh, and won't take up any space in your bag. But so on um, weather band, pulls in WXJ84 with the an- with this antenna attached, basically perfectly. Fog. Patchy freezing drizzle after midnight. Ice accumulation around a trace. Colder with lows around 30. And can it pull in WXM70? Let's find out. kind of can. It's very distorted. You wouldn't want to use it as your local forecasting station. On FM, this is actually pretty good. Uh, let's see how many stations we can pull in. Uh, starting off here at um, 88.1. Can it pull in WTSQ? 
No, it can't. Uh, that's what the AM loop antenna connected in, which works on all bands. But here's 88.5. In their growing practices and in, in their planning as well, so that we can. With no antenna, static. With an antenna. There's talk radio out of Huntington. There's K Love of Marmet, 93.3. I'm faintly hearing... Well, I guess you're not wondering what that station is anymore. It's 93.7 WD... <laughs> WDGG out of... Um, is, um, out. Oh, there's WTSQ. Yeah, I've got the antenna now sitting on the nightstand, and there's WTSQ LP. It's a low-power station out of downtown Charleston. There's the Air One feed out of Huntington. Air Love... Uh, sorry, Air One Charleston. Huntington Talk Radio. Yeah, we've started over. No word from 90.9. The dog. Oh! There's 94.5. It's a local Charleston station. New Live 94.5. It's a Christian contemporary. There's W237AZ, which is an FM translator for WKAZ AM 680. 20 showed us so much can be accomplished when we focus collectively on solving some of the world's problems. Which I don't understand how anybody would put down. There's 957 again from Charleston. They're the FM translator for WVTS AM 1240. Because it has to be in writing. Oh no! Uh, Well, actually, uh, 95.3 uh, W237AZ, WKZ AM used to be an oldie station around here, and originally it was mono and uh, AM quality, but they did an upgrade, and then they switched it over to Bloomberg Radio. Thank you. You removed an oldie station that we all loved in Charleston for Boomerberg Radio. Thank you. Uh, but here's 96.1 to be KWS, um, FM, not their HD station, this is not an HD radio, but it comes in basically crystal clear, but it is a local station. Uh, 96.5, which is one of two FM translators for WCHS. Back after a pickup of two to the 43 yard line. Two really, really nice plays in a row here. There's 97.5 WQBE. It's our local, uh, one of our local crap country stations. There's uh, K Love out of Charleston instead of Marmette. It's the same exact feed. It's going to be an incredible journey. We're going to laugh, we're going to cry, and we're going to soak in the word of God. And we're going to make America great again. At accessmore.com and the new Access More app, available in your app store. I'm not one of Donald Trump's biggest fans. Uh, here's an odd station around here. 98.7 WRVZ. It's a local hip-hop station. But, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this, Hunter. Can you tell me what's wrong with this? Do you hear that? That high frequency? That's, uh, that sounds like they're using a CRT in their studio. 
but that's on pre-recorded stuff. That's on everything they broadcast. It sounds like CRT. Like, it's like the flyback transformer in a CRT, and it's hard to listen to, but I don't like hip-hop anyway. There's 99.3, the river. It's another religious station, not from Charleston, I don't think. There's WVAF, um, local. There's WKEE 100.5. It's Huntington's top 40 station. Five point nine classic hit the mix. One one five the bear coming in faintly there. I think they're out of Gala Police actually. Car was a yeah. burgundy Peugeot. This is a 102.3. In Huntington, it's a simulcast of 100.9 The Mix, but they've actually added in a low-power talk station in South Charleston or St. Albans, one of the two. Then, uh, <laughs> oh, then. There's uh, WVSR, 1027's our local uh, Top 40 station. And that's... What the hell is wrong with you, man? Yeah, I understand. Here is WCIR coming in a little bit faintly. It's Beckley's uh, Top 40 station. Here's your storm tracker 59 three day forecast for Sunday. We'll be a little on the cool side. Temperatures will only make it up into the low to mid 40s. Showers and snow showers are possible throughout the afternoon. Monday, we're even cooler, only making it up into the upper 30s, but we don't have any rain chances for the day. Tuesday, a weak cold front may get close enough to bring us some snow showers. Temperatures in the afternoon will be in the upper 30s. I'm meteorologist Amber Kulik on 103 CIR. The commercials are tired from all this activity, and they really need a nap. It's cold in here! It is not cold in here! Yeah. Anyway, back to the music. 103 CIR. There's 104.5. Remember how I said um, WCHS had two FM translators? This is the second one uh, for uh, Cross Lanes. Pulling it in pretty well out here. Reports. Greg Kelly and Newsmax are unafraid to tell the truth. WKLC, uh, Rock 105. They're a pretty good station on here. Hunter, yeah, can you identify this? Yusuf Shiz... <laughs> Yusuf Shazam is not allowed. Okay, we are not. What is with that one kilohertz sine wave fading in and out? Listen. I don't know what's up with that. Um, but so we're not pulling in 105 WKQV out of Sutton. This is 1063, I forget the call sign. I want to say WAXS. I know it's not that. I don't I don't think. It's 1063 the brew. It's um it's a classic rock station for Huntington serving Huntington, Ashland, Ironton, the Tri-State area. Where you can return, 
Ripper, hey. Hey. Great view at Charmin. We heard you shouldn't talk about going to the bathroom in public, so... Well, too bad. Let's make it on YouTube. Fuck your Charmin ads. With the interception stepping in front of Gabriel Davis. This is our local uh, ESPN radio station. Uh, they're also on, um, I don't think it's 950 because that's uh, the Sports Fox. Uh, I don't know. We'll find out when we do AM. Actually, you know what? Should I drop the mic? At Navy Federal Credit Union. Okay, so it's not the same thing. Police force and the DOD. All are welcome to join, whether you're active duty or was it 1490? Mm. We've always got your But either way, they're a local ESPN radio station. There's 107.3 KAZ. It uh, used to be a bunch of things. Uh, it was, most recently before this, Tailgate, uh, which ran a mixture of party songs for party people. So everything from classic rock, in heavy air quotes, a bit of country, a bit of hip-hop, it was a weird thing. Now they're running modern crap country. I don't love you like I used to. And we don't love your music. breathe if he put pressure on his toes to lift his body up so he could take a breath. And then when his toes... There's 107.9, which, uh, I don't know what they're running exactly, um, but they are... I want to say it's like WESM or WSSM. I don't, I don't know what it was. I, I, or WESM. I forget what their call sign was. Um, but they're another religious station out of Huntington. Um, and you will notice, uh, here that this is not using 200 kilohertz, uh, FM tuning steps it's using 100 kilohertz. So if you, so if you're on 107.3 and you click up, it goes to 107.4. Which is, I think is better, but, you know. Well, I mean, really... In the U.S., all the stations are going to be um, spaced at 200 kilohertz steps. However, like in Mexico, some of them are at, um, well, some of them are actually, like, like 94.0 might be a station down in Mexico or something. Words out of this man's mouth, after going through all this initial pain, his first words were, Father, what? To call any Give time, me that's... something for Christmas. <laughs> so let's talk about AM reception, which does have um, two notable features. If you press but, uh, preset buttons one and three together, it toggles between three kilohertz or four kilohertz AM filtering, which makes this difference. Which makes things sound between this. Most people, like myself, actually leave it um, at 4 kilohertz instead of 3 kilohertz. Uh, unless you have a uh, nearby station which can use some high frequency stuff, it's designed to filter that out. And if you press buttons 1 and 4 together, which again produces a beep, you can do 1 kilohertz steps, which is good for attempting to avoid noise from adjacent stations or tuning into a slightly off frequency station. So. It does make it quieter, though. Yeah, but the radio doesn't get the loudest, but I mean, it's a small thing. It's not designed to fill your room with booming sound. Verizon Business CEO Tammy Irwin on reducing the mental toll of the pandemic on her employees. This is Bloomberg. Boomerberg. I struggled with symptoms like frequent gas and stomach pain for years. I was bloated. Now I struggle with nobody liking me.
So it pulls in a few local stations um, on AM, um, and this is daytime. It's, uh, what is, what's the time? Okay, it's 3.23 p.m., so the sun doesn't set for another two hours or so. Um, at nighttime, this thing is a force to be reckoned with. This is about on par with or exceeding the Sanji and CL100 for AM reception. Uh, from Charleston, I've Which pulled in... crazy because of how small the CC pocket is. Thank you, Seagrave. Well, it also means that there's a little less technology packed into it. Um, plus, yeah. C-Crane knows they're doing, they actually tout, uh, the features for AMDXing, uh, like, built-in AMDXing tools actually tout that as a selling point on the box. Um, so they know what they're doing, clearly. Um, yeah. from my home here in Charleston, I've pulled in stations at nighttime as diverse as, uh, WSB, WBZ, uh, CHML and CFZM, KDKA... Although that's just Pittsburgh, uh, Camo X, St. Louis. Um, and I haven't tried taking this thing too far in terms of AMDXing stuff, but this thing is force record with. And those aren't all just enough pulling in. Those are just a little short list. Oh, and I forgot, like WLIC and stuff. Um, so basically, like with this thing, I'm able to pull in stations. From all around the southeast, the northeast, eastern portion of Canada, and the Midwest. I gotta say, that is a lot. That's a decent swath of the United States. And, um. Yeah. And this thing might even be able to do transatlantic DXing, but it's not the right time of year for that quite yet. Um. Which is the next feature that we're going to get into tuning calibration. If you hold on, I wanna say it's button three. For a couple seconds. Okay, it's not maybe button four. Five. I think I've used tuning calibration. What? I said I don't think I've used tuning calibration. Before. Well, there's no need for it in the U.S. Oh, yeah. Shit, work. Find Joe Biden's electoral. Wow. Really, really nice. Well, stay at home. Uh, is it one? Oh shit! I think I turned off the beeps. Okay, there we go. So let's try... Is it one? Two? Four? Is it five? There we go. This recalibrates the radio in terms of AM and FM. It does still leave weather band enabled for some reason, but it recalibrates FM instead of for 87.5 to 108 megahertz, it recalibrates it for 76 to 108 megahertz, which means you can use it in the UK, Japan, places like that. And it, recalib and it recalibrates AM for nine kilohertz tuning steps, which is used Basically, the rest of the world outside of North America. So, everything from yeah. Europe, J uh, Europe, Asia, Australia, places like that, they all use 9 kilohertz tuning instead of 10 kilohertz tuning. And indeed, it will overlap every, well, every so frequencies. And indeed, like 580, you can pull in on two different things. But it's not going to sound the best. And uh, in fact, your presets carry over. So, for example, I have uh, preset 1 here is 580, and even though it's in 9 kilohertz tuning, I can press preset 1 and pull in 580 perfectly on frequency. And you don't even, and if you're trying to do international DXing, you don't even need to recalibrate it because you just hit 1 and 4 to get it to go into 1 kilohertz tuning mode, and then you can really get down to the nitty gritty of AM tuning. Oh, yeah. As I mentioned. It's really helpful. Well, transatlantic in particular, um, um, of course, nothing in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, and I don't even think Cuba does this either, um, does anything other than a 10 kilohertz tuning steps, and I'm gonna put the floppy disks back in my nightstand. Go in, damn it. 
so this thing is a beast in terms of AMDXing. FM, it's pretty good. On FM, I've pulled in stations farthest away I've tried uh, during high pressure systems was Bridgeport, West Virginia, which is up in the Clarksburg area, and I was able to pull in a station out of Bridgeport. So that was pretty good. That's, I want to say like 150 miles away or something, I don't know. And of course, once you're getting into E skip, also known as Sparata E, or however you're supposed to pronounce it, then it really gets insane, even on the most plebeian of radios. Yeah, it's, it's a great radio. Yes, it is. Which brings us into the final conclusion. Should you get this radio? Yes. I would say. I think 100%, if you got the money to do it, it's only 60 bucks on Amazon, go for it. Yeah, because this thing's a great value. It's a size of a deck of cards. It does AM, FM, and weather band basically like the best you can for a little pocket radio. It's a fantastic value. You will get your money worth out of it. And more, and if you don't, well, then why are you watching this video? You're not a, you're not a geek. Basically, if you're trying to get the best radio you can um, and you want it to be mobile, this is basically what you get. And it's uh, pretty nice. Not to mention, of course, it's a backlit display with fully digital tuning and stuff. Alarm and clock functions, which I don't even bother to set because I can't see the screen. Alert function on weather band. It's just 1050 hertz activated. Um, so it's not a same compatible radio. But, I mean, the radios I own that are 1050 hertz activated are, well, my little baby HH here. I'll stop that there. The 260. The 74105XL. Um, and then, of course, in the other room, I got the 12-247A, which I'm pretty sure is also 1050 hertz. But yeah, should you get the C-Crane CC Pocket? Absolutely, yes. It's basically like the best radio you can get. This size. This. Um, oh, and... This thing is stupidly efficient on batteries. The batteries, oh, yeah. I have in this thing. For rechargeables, shoot, I can get a very, let's just say if I don't use it a good month, month and a half, a very long time, even with little mm -hmm. use, it's crazy. Oh, no, no, man. Mine is even better than that. I use this thing fairly frequently. I have not charged these batteries up since July of last year, and they're still running strong. And these are rechargeables. Yes. These are 1.2-volt yeah. rechargeables, not 1.5-volt alkalines. Uh, they're Amazon Basics. But alkalines, yeah. you get even longer life because they're 1.5 volts to 1.2. So not only do they have a longer shelf life, but they can uh, sustain a bit of a higher voltage for, well, longer. Um, and this thing is crazily efficient. And when the batteries died in July, I hadn't charged them up since I'd gotten them in Christmas 2018. Oh no, sorry, Christmas, oh, no, sorry, Christmas 2019, rather. I keep feeling like it's 2020 instead of 2021. I'm an idiot, but either way, though... Either way, though, this thing is crazy efficient. Definitely worth the money. And, well... Yeah, anyways, that's all. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to Hunter's Technical Fun for collaborating with me on this episode. Go subscribe to his channel. Definitely makes a lot of good content. EAS alerts, technology unboxings and reviews and stuff. Go give him the support. Link to his channel will be in the description below. Anyways, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good day. And if it's nighttime, go fuck yourself. You shouldn't be watching this at night. Sleep. Get your sleep. I'm not your dad or anything, but get your sleep. My fist hurts now. I just punched the wall.